What's going on everyone? Nick here from Stan's Fam. Um, what I got here is a GPS tracking device. Insurance nowadays, if you have a triple engine boat or more, we got quads on here. Most insurance companies require that you have a GPS tracker. So this is from Atlas Tracks. One of my friends had it, he recommended it. So I just got it. We're gonna install it on the boat here, you know, really for safety, just in case, you know, God forbid anyone ever try to steal the boat. But we're gonna put this on the boat, we're gonna hide it, you know, so they wouldn't see it. And then we could track it wherever it goes. And also, you know, if I'm out there fishing or something ever happened, and I, you know, my wife hasn't heard from me, Sarah hasn't heard from me, she can reach out to Atlas Tracks and they can give her my last location, all that, my track. So really excited about this. We're gonna install this on the boat and we're getting ready to go fishing here. It's the end of uh, May now. We got about, what is it, May 26th. And the keys open back up June 1st. Uh, you know, we've been closed to COVID-19. But we're getting ready to go fishing. Here's the fish box. Oh, bad bean. Bad bean right there. All right, so bean fishing me last time. He obviously didn't clean the fish box out good enough. But, um, oh, look at that slime in there. That's gross. Nice and stinky. Everybody loves a stinky fish box on a boat. The bait coolers are the worst, though, when you open those up and they stink. So we're at the fuel dock now. We're going to get some fuel here. Um, we're going to fill this up. Probably put about 200 gallons in, then I'll fish the next two days. We burn about 100 gallons per trip when we swordfish, and uh, hopefully the swordfish cooperate for us. So I'm going to go install that GPS tracker. And I'm not going to show where I put it, obviously. I don't want anyone to know where it is. But uh, we'll do that here. Then I'm also going to go to my rod shed. I'm going to show you guys my arsenal of rods, you know, the rods and reels I use on a daily basis. And when we go back to the slip, I'm going to show you something else that I got, a new toy for the boat that works really well. So we're back in the slip here. We got fuel for tomorrow, but this is what I want to show you guys. It's the Spot Zero water system. There's a water purifier, so when you wash the boat up, it doesn't leave any water spots. Um, it really helps out a lot. That's Colby over there. <laughs> Colby. Hello, Colby. <laughs> But right here, spot zero. So it's a water purifier. We gotta turn it on. So you gotta run power to it. Let's get the water on first. Just like that. Water's going. We're gonna flush the system. We got it on flush. We're gonna turn the power on right here. And you'll hear it power up. Flush it out. Here we go. You know, the main reason for this is when you have a boat, you know, a nice boat, and you're washing at the end of the day, you gotta shammy the entire boat a lot of times you know, to get all the water spots off. But we've been using this now for about six months. And I really wanted to use it first and get familiar with it before I started talking about it. But I mean, check the metal out here. You can see it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go up to the tower now and show you we didn't really wax and polish this metal. So I'm gonna show you the, what the water spots look like with the old hose. Cause the tower doesn't get as clean as the downstairs. But check this out right here now. You can see all these water spots right there. Now that's minerals and all that in the water. So those are hard water spots and stains. And it's tough to get out now. So if you get a boat, you know, and you wax it right away, it'll keep it a lot longer. You know, your metal looking a lot better, even your paint, your gel coat, everything. That spot zero system, you can spray the whole boat if you don't have to chamois it where I don't always come up here to chamois. And that's why I have all these water spots up and down on the metal like that. You know, especially there and up there like that. So that's what I've been excited about. You know, instead of shamming the boat for 30 or 40 minutes at the end of the day, we spray it off with that and we walk away from it. The curtains stay clear, the metal stays clean, the paint on the boat and all the gel coat stays clean. So it's been pretty cool to have it. I'll show you that here a little bit more. Look at that gel coat here. We haven't waxed it in about four months. We, Dawson waxed it this winter. You know, Bean doesn't really wax. So Dawson helped out a lot. He helped wax the boat, but nice and clean up here. And the pads here, you can see they're still pretty clean too. And it's really doing a good job. And we're gonna spray the boat off now. We still have great water pressure with it. I mean, you still have great water pressure. The boat's been sitting for a few days. It's been blowing like 20 to 30 miles an hour. So there's some salt on it from the ocean out there. You can see uh, right on the ocean. But when we spray all this stuff, we don't have to chamois it. And tomorrow morning, this will be crystal clear. So check them out, Spot Zero. And uh, you know, check the website out. Check them out on social media, Instagram and all that. I'm gonna give the boat a quick rinse and we're gonna start icing it down here. But I mean, you can imagine shamming all this. You'd be here drying every inch of this boat every time you wash it every day. And now if you're wondering how often to change the filters, there's a gauge on it right here. So we're at 8,500 gallons right there. 
at 10,000 gallons, that's when we change the filters. So I've been using it for a while and I'm really happy with it. Oh, it's been looking good. It really beats chamois in. All right, I'm gonna go show you my rod closet now. Just kind of show you my everyday rod locker. So with my rod locker, I just want to show you, you know, the arsenal that we have when we fish. We got a lot of different rods, so. Over here, we got some jigging rods. These are my bigger outfits. 65 pound braid on that torque. 80 pound braid there. 80 pound braid there. These are carnage two rods, um, you know, from Penn. Then I have a lot of spinners in here as well. I keep monofilament on half my spinners and braid on the other half. Um, we were doing quite a bit of sail fishing in April. You know, we had those couple epic days. We got 33 sailfish one day, 19 another day. Those were my two best days I ever had in my whole life here in Florida. But, uh, so my sailfish rods are over here. You know, 16 pound monofilament on those. Penn spin fishers right there. Carnage two rods. And a lot of times when I'm fishing for like dolphin and tuna, you know, dolphin or mahi, I like that braid on my uh, spinning reels. So we got like 30 pound braid on this one for casting. We got 50 pound on there. These are for like bigger mahi, you know, bigger blackfin tunas. We got 80 pound braid on these two big spin fishers here. All carnage two rods, I guess, to be honest with you. This is my favorite reel right here. The Torx from Penn, the conventionals. That's the 40 right there. High speed, lightweight, really smooth. Both those are size 40s. These are the 25, so all those tunas we caught jigging were on these reels here. 30 pound braid, pen torque 25 right there, you can see it. So when we go fishing, you know, usually I'll have four or five jigging rods, four or five spinners for casting, and also a couple of trolling rods. Um, we'll use some of like the bigger pens here, the 50s, got a 70 there. And we'll, we'll use the torch for trolling too, this one here in particular. I use those for jigging. This one here we use for trolling right there. I got monofilament on one, braid on another, little flying fish lure right there. Great for dolphin and tuna. Those are international rods right there, international six. Sword fishing is what I do most of the time. So I got a lot of sword fish rods and deep drop rods. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven rods for sword fishing and deep drop and all pens um, with hooker electric motors. My stand up rods for sword fishing, we want a stand up fish. I got right here. They're international 50s, and then the motor snaps on and off the side there. These are on my own custom swordfish rods right there, my stands rods. So, you now a rod we kind of designed and built out. I like the action of those. We got them on Winthrop butt so it can be straight or bent. My big reels for using the electrics, leaving them in the holder. Right here, this is what I've been using. It's my Hooker International 80. So it's a Hooker electric reel, motor on a Penn International 6 reel, 80 pound braid, 200 pound wind on leader. This is a seven foot rod, another one of my stand swordfish rods. I'll put links in the description. If you are interested in getting a swordfish rod, I'll send you over to my website. You can purchase them there. We got those there. And I'll show you one deep drop rod too. For all our barrel fish, queen snappers, tile fish, right here, 50 wide, got the hooker motor on it, 65 pound braid, same stand-up rod. So this rod is the same one I use for stand-up sword fishing, but catch five pound tile fish on it. And I've caught 600 pound swordfish here on stand-up, uh, on that stand-up stand swordfish rod years ago, two years ago. So we got a couple kite reels here, little hooker electric right there, International 16. That's for bringing the kites in and out. You know, this is a kite right here when we use that. I don't do as much kite fishing as I used to do. I used to do quite a bit on the reef, but pretty much I swordfish all the time now. So there you have it though. That's the rod locker, so quite a few conventionals, lots of spinners, some jigging conventionals, a couple jigging spinners, and then more spinners over here. Hope you like seeing all them rods and reels. We're getting ready to get out of here. The Keys reopened June 1st. We've been shut down because of the coronavirus. Non-residents couldn't get in. All these backcountry boats will be fishing and all the offshore boats will be fishing too. You can see all these offshore boats as well out there. Come on down here. You know, summertime's a great time to fish and visit. Check all these tarpon out here underneath the dock too. They're always here hanging out, swimming around. Even if you don't come down here to go on a fishing trip or charter, you know, just come in, get a shirt or drink, check them out, walk the dock, see all the tarpon here, all the fish. So that's pretty cool. Look at them all down there. We got houseboats here as well. There's four houseboats. There's motel rooms over there in the center. 
and it's gonna be limited occupancy to start out with uh, i believe 50 percent for the motel rooms and hotel rooms but uh as the summer progresses you know we'll be back in full swing soon so stop in here at bud mary's and check it out i just got home i'm on the atlas tracks website I logged into my account we're going to click the map button right here and it uploads and it shows you the last spot of the broad minded you can see it right there on the fuel dock that's where we installed it and uh, that's where we got the fuel at so that's pretty cool to see and you know nice peace of mind knowing where your boat's at in case anything bad ever happens you can track it down there so looking forward to working with them check them out hope you all enjoyed that video that's a couple updates to the broad minded Got the Atlas Tracks GPS tracker, got the Spot Zero water purifier, and a uh, little coronavirus update on the keys and just business in general. We'll see you next time. Here go fishing. Here's the fish box. Oh, bad bean. Bad bean right there. All right, so bean fishing me last time. He obviously didn't clean the fish box out good enough, but um, oh, look at that slime in there. That's gross. Nice and stinky.